Welcome to session eight of carving a drake mallard and today we're going to focus on mounting the head. I've carved the neck and breast area in kind of a domed shape so that I can consider a lot of different positions. This bird could be in a preying position like this or it could be in a head down position like this. But I think I'm going to set him in a position kind of like this. This will be the last video in this series of carving a Drake Mallard. I hope it's been helpful for you and let's get to it. There's that domed area that I talked about. I want this head to be on an angle. Let's keep in mind our center line here in this general vicinity. Now we want to keep the head level. We don't want to pocket one side or the other too much, or I don't in this particular position. I want it to be back a little bit, um, and I want the bill to be up a little bit, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of a target area over here by tracing around the decoy, and I'm going to flatten that area with the grinding bit until it matches up to the neckline that I've created here. Just gonna use that three quarter inch cylindrical saber tooth burr and begin to flatten that area that I've identified by tracing around the head. And angle it down towards the side pocket. This is kind of an iterative process, so I like to check the position as, as I go. And I need to take out more wood to keep that head level. So I'm gonna take out wood in the back of the neck there, begin to dig down a little bit in this area right here to bury that part of the head deeper into the body. So using that same bit, I'm going to focus on this area right here and carefully grind deeper in that area and then re-flatten the shelf that I'm creating so we'll have good contact with the head. Try that again. Okay, I'm making progress, but I still need to do a little bit more there. Check side to side, make sure the head is level as I'm grinding further in this area. Now that I'm closer, I'm gonna to switch to this quarter inch burr and very carefully use that to take out a little more wood near the back of the head to bury that deeper into the cape area and use the end of that burr to level things as I go. Again, this is a back and forth process to get the head in the position that uh, you're satisfied with. Check it again. I'm getting close. I think that's pretty good. I want to check it from the front and I often put a line, center line back on the head and just take a look at the angles in my straight side to side from the forward view. Now that I have the head set at the proper angle or the angle that I wanted it, I'm going to use DevCon five minute two part epoxy. I'm going to try to use it. Mix that up. Now, if this were a gunning bird, I would put a, a dowel in to make sure the head stays in place. Since this is a more of a decorative mantle bird, 
I'm not doweling the head to the body. And there will be plenty of strength in this epoxy. So once that is mixed up, just putting it in place on the bottom of the bird. I'm just using an old paintbrush handle. When paintbrushes go bad, it's a nice thing to, to use for glue spreading. I like to put a little on the bottom of the head as well so that both surfaces are coated well. Then we're just going to press that in place. Make sure there's good contact there. And then I'll wipe off the excess glue so that I don't have to grind that off later. Once that epoxy is dried, I have one more bit of carving to do here. I want to carve a little bit of separation in the breast in the front of the bird. So I'm going to use that quarter inch burr and begin to shape the breast in this area. Going from both directions here to soften those and put some roundness in there with the grinder. And then we'll do some sanding to blend things together and soften, soften it overall. I'm using the half inch drum sander to just round things and blend things together there. And then I'll do some final hand sanding to uh, smooth everything out when I'm done with the drum sander. Here's a quick view of that area after sanding. You can see the just catches a little bit of a shadow there. Now I'm taking plastic wood on a little popsicle stick, <clears throat> forcing that into the neck joint in several places, and then using acetone and a paintbrush to go in and smooth the plastic wood down and feather it into the neck. I'll use this process all the way around the head to blend the head into the breast. Keep working it to get a nice soft transition between the head and the breast. Just a quick 360 after that plastic wood has been applied and blended in. And I may have to go back and reinforce a few areas later, but we'll let that dry and then come back and finish sand. And the decoy will be complete. Well, this completes our series on carving a drake mallard, and I hope it's been helpful. I hope you picked up a few things that you might be able to use in your own decoy carving. My goal for this YouTube channel really is to promote wildfowl carving and the tradition of wildfowl carving and decoy carving specifically. And uh, if you know of others that might be interested in this or could be helped by it, please share it with them. The goal is to get other people involved in this um, hobby, whatever you want to call it. It's been fantastic uh, pastime for me and I 
I really enjoy it. And by the way, there's a great group of people involved in, in decoy and wildfowl carving across the country and internationally as well. So until next time, good carving to all of you.